Welcome to the chapter 25 assignment video. So in the uh, video today, what we're going to do is we're going to go through the six questions that are in chapter 25 assignment. I'm going to walk through uh, what each what each question is asking, right? How to solve the question and maybe give you some tips, some more tips to help add on to your knowledge of the time value of money and how to calculate um, the net present value internal rate of return uh, using several different me different methods. So we're going to start here with question one. In question one we're going to be adding a new product to a company's line of products. In order to add the new product the company needs to purchase a piece of equipment. So that's our capital purchase, right? So. What we need to do is we need to uh, do some calculations on purchasing the equipment and then we're going to have to do some time value of money uh, calculations as well. They give us a nice link there to use to get to some of the tables that we're going to be, be uh, using to get our factors. Okay, so number one in this, so this, this is just one question but it's divided up into several different parts. And so we'll start with number one here. It says, uh, compute the straight line depreciation for each year of this new, new machine's life. So what we're going to do is we're going to need to use this information up here on top. So we have the initial cost. We have the salvage value, right? And we have the useful life. So those are the three components that we need to do a straight line calculation. So it's going to be laid out in this format. So it's going to look something like this. So we're going to have our uh, cost of the machine and we're going to subtract any salvage value. salvage value and then we're going to divide that all by the uh, useful life and that will give us our answer to put in the box there so that's the equation straight line depreciation now we're going to ha have to do in order to do some of the other calculations for this one we're going to have to determine the net income and the net cash flow so those are really important ones for us to the capital uh, budgeting methods right the methods that we that we learned about in chapter 25. okay so we're going to have to do uh lay out each of these rows and i'm going to kind of uh, tell you kind of how the rows are the rows are laid out to get us the right answer. So to begin with, we begin with our revenues, right? And we're going to get the information from up here. Okay. So our this is all expected. So expected income. So we're going to go up here and do our expected annual sales. This is going to be our first line, and then we're going to fill in with all the cost. So here's our uh, sales. Our expenses are going to be direct materials, direct labor. We're also going to have some uh, overhead, excluding straight line depreciation. We're going to separate that one out uh, special because that one is a non cash item, so it's going to be important for us at the end here uh, to throw it back in for another calculation. So we're going to go ahead and do our straight line depreciation that we just calculated, right? So whatever we calculated up in up in this box, we're going to drag that down. That'll be our answer there for the straight line depreciation. And then we're going to do our uh, selling and admin expenses. We'll throw that in at the end here. We'll have a couple blank rows, uh, but we're going to get all that information from up top, okay? And what that's going to get us is that's going to help us derive uh, the total expenses. Okay, so we're going to have a total expenses column that shows up here, right? And then uh, we're going to have what's called an income right here. This will be income before taxes. So we're going to have our 
uh, sales number, subtract from our total expenses, and that will be our income before taxes. Right, sales minus expenses is income. Income before taxes. Now we're gonna have the uh, tax expense. So here's our income tax expense. And that one is going to be uh, subtracted from the income before taxes. We calculate income before taxes by taking the income right here, right? Whatever that number is. And we're going to multiply that by our tax rate. In this case, it's 34%. If you do it on a calculator, it's gonna be 0.34, right, in decimal. So whatever our answer is for that, we're gonna plug that into our income tax expense. And then we're gonna subtract our income tax expense from our income before taxes, and that will get us our net income in, in the end, right? So in order to keep us going here, we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and so that our net income, whatever that is, we're gonna slide it down into the next section because we, yet, we know what their, our net income is, but now we need to know what the true cash flow is, right? So that's gonna be something we're gonna use. And so we have our net income. Net income isn't necessarily cash. Okay, so that's what we, we see that our sales are cash and our, our expenses for materials and labor are all cash but our depreciation is not. And so what we're gonna do is we're going to add our depreciation back in to net income. So we're gonna add that back in. And then that will give us our net cash flow, okay? So that, that's how that one works. And so we're gonna need that for down here, right? So we're gonna compute our uh, payback period. So in order to, to compute our payback period, we have to take the cost of investment, which is the initial cost, right? Okay, so our cost of investment's up here. This is our initial cost, right? And we need to divide that by our annual net cash flow, which is gonna be that the bottom line here that we calculated up above. So this is our annual net cash flow. And so go ahead and plug in the real numbers that you've calculated and that will give you your payback period in years. Now the next thing we need to do, number four here, is we're gonna compute the machine's accounting rate of return. In order to do, in order to do that, we have to use our annual after-tax net income. Right, so if you look back at the book, you'll see all these equations, right? And so the, the annual after-tax net income is gonna be up here, right? So this is after-tax, that'll be our net income that we calculated at the bottom of the first section. So we're gonna plug that one in, and then we're gonna divide it by the annual uh, average investment. And really what that is, is that's the initial investment. So um, the initial investment that we find up here, right? I should say add our salary value, sorry. Not subtract, sorry, add. So we're gonna add the two values, the beginning value, which is our initial cost, the ending value, which is our salvage value. We're gonna add those together. And then we're gonna divide by two. And that will give us our average uh, investment to plug into here, our annual average investment. And that'll be in, a, in rate form. So it's it, what it's really looking for is, uh, go ahead and, and um, put it in a percentage form and and the, uh, so it'll be a percentage form, not in decimal. So you gotta, usually you gotta move those, the decimal over two spaces to the right right, and put it into percentage form, right? So uh, that's what that is. And then our very last one for this, so it's kind of, this one's kind of a long one, but relatively simple here. We're going to compute the net present value for this machine using a discount rate of 6% and assuming that the cash flows uh, occur each year end. So we're, we're assuming also that they're gonna be even cash flows, right? We're gonna get the same cash flows every year. 
so what we're going to have here, we, we're going to go ahead and fill this in. It, it filled it in for us. It gives us a, a n of 4, which is the number of periods, right? So we know that it's going to be 4 years long, right? Salvage value. We know that the, the interest is going to be, uh, it's actually going to be 6%. Sorry. There we go. That's what our 6% is there. Okay, so we know our, let's see, I'm gonna make sure, let me just double check. Yep, okay, so it's gonna be four years and it's gonna be 6%, perfect. Okay, and so now what we're, we're gonna do is we're going to uh, first calculate the annual cash flow, right? So our annual cash flow is going to be what we calculated up here, uh, net cash flow, right? So whatever the net cash flow is, we're gonna bring it down into amount and we're gonna select from our rows here, we're gonna select present value of an annuity of one. So we know every year we're going to receive that cash flow. So that becomes an annuity, especially so when they're even, we can do we can use the present value of annuity uh, factor chart. Okay. So um, whatever that number is, and then we need to look for that's our present value factor on our on our table. So we, that's why we have our uh, we have our links up at the top here. Okay, so we see PV of one. Okay, that's for that's for just one year present value discount one number back. PVA is present value of an annuity. So that's annuity the same cash flow throughout the years. That's the table we're going to be using. PVA of one, and it'll bring up the table for us. There's also another way to get to these tables, okay? And, and it may be useful when you're doing testing, okay? And, and that is gonna be, let me show you what, how, how you get to these tables here. So let's say, for example, we're at our Blackboard. So this is our Blackboard uh, website for the class. If you want to get to your uh, ebook, right? So you have your electronic book, you can go to Course Management, McGraw-Hill Higher, Higher Education and then click on uh, this link here that says go to my connect section. So that's going to throw us to this the main section of the connect product and over on the right it has the ebook. So we can click on that and it'll take us to the ebook page. Now if, if we go to the book contents we're going to need to go to the end matter. So the these charts or these factor tables are found in appendix B of the book. So if you have a hard copy book, you can just go ahead and flip all the way back to Appendix B and the those factor tables will be there. If you're using the electronic version, then click on this end matter here in the uh, table of contents and that'll throw us out to Appendix A. We can go ahead and click over one to Appendix B here using the arrow and then we can scroll down till we find the tables. So they're going to be towards the bottom. So here, here are the tables here. Present value of one, pre uh, future value of one, present value of an annuity of one. So this is what we're going to be using, right? Is this table. So I think uh, I remember, so 6% was what we were using. So we go over on top, we see the percentage rate. So we're going to be at 6% here. And then we're going to go down to four years. Boom, 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 boom. So they're right there. Uh, 3.4651. That is our present value of an annuity of one factor. And we multiply that by our cash flows that we calculated up there. So our annual cash flows. We calculate, we multiply 3.46. 5 1 by that cash flow. And your percentage, uh, your periods may be different, right? The period of four is our four year useful life of the of the machine. That's what we used. Um, so so anyways, you can you can um, get your plug in your percentage and your periods and find the right number using that method. Just wanted to let you know where it was in your textbook for sure. So here we are. We're, we plug that in down here at the bottom. Uh, our whatever it was, it was I think it was like three point 
four six seven one something like that right and we put plug in our amount of cash flows that we calculated up top and then we go down here to the residual value so this is so we factored in we discounted using the that first row we discounted all of the net cash flows we received but we didn't discount one of the net cash flows we're going to receive at the very end of the useful life of the of the machine and that is the residual value or the salvage value okay and we, we need to discount that back to the present value and that's just going to be a present value of one it's not an annuity we don't get the salvage value every year right we just get it at the end once in the life of the product so that's going to be a present value uh, of one and so as we go up here, we're not going to be using the, pre the PVA of one. We're going to be using present value of one. So that helps us find the present value of one. And we're going to, again, we're going to use four years because that salvage value we get uh, four years from now at the end of the useful life. And it's going to be 6% is the same. So in this case, it's going to be 0.7921. So we go ahead and plug that in. Here we go, 0.7921. There we go. Okay. So what? What? Uh, so from these, we're going to calculate. We're going to have two uh, values that will be calculated, right? Amount times present value uh, for both of these. So we're going to have two present values calculated, and then we're going to add them together. That gives us the present value of of cash inflows. That's all the cash we're going to get discounted back to present value. To get net present value, we actually subtract from our present value of cash inflows the uh, present value of cash outflows, which is it, just our initial investment, right? So we don't have any other cash outflows. We could have some cash outflows during the four years of, that we have the machine, but we, didn't, or we don't have any during the four years. All we have going out is the initial investment so that's what we're going to subtract is that initial investment uh, which is up here and in my case it's going to be uh, $499,000 and then that will get us net present value so that's that's problem one